Hi. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Forester 3 object, which is part of the Forester plugin for Cinema 4D. I'm going to add my Forester 3, and the first thing we see is the default tree that we get with the plugin. Now, in order to see the tree properly, I'm going to go to my tree library and uh, just click again on the icon for the default tree, and this will actually give it some default materials. So, if I go back to my tree parameters, the uh, first thing I can do is, under tree preview, check the line mode, and what this will do is display the tree as lines, and this is uh, for display optimization. And this is particularly useful whenever I'm testing out wind. So, for example, if I go to hyperwind and uh, check the wind to be on, um, I can actually see this play in uh, real time. And um, this applies, of course, to any tree. So, if I go to uh, display a different type of tree, it will actually display as lines like so. Now, every tree has a different uh, line color, which is uh, there for you to actually differentiate the different trees whenever you are uh, creating a forest, for example. But, of course, you can change the line color to whatever you want. So, let's go back to the default tree. The next button is the randomized tree. We can use it to create a different random look for the tree. And uh, the randomness is dealing with the noise deformation of the trunk and the branches and the leaves. Now, look at the three seed value over here. Whenever I'm changing the randomization, I'm actually changing the seed. So, it's the same as going like this. But um, this is actually easier to click on, first of all. And then, this is good for um, remembering a good seed that you would want to use. For example, let's say 4508 is the one I want to get back to later. So, it's easy to memorize because it's just a number. So, whenever I go like this and then I say, no, I, wanted, uh, the, I want the one that I had earlier, I can just type again the number and I would get back to that previous seed. All right, the um, highlight last level is uh, there for you whenever you are working on a custom tree that you are designing. So, whenever you have a dark color here for the line color, and uh, you want to really focus on that last level, in this case, the last level is level number five. So, let's um, set the render levels to five as well. Um, whenever I set the render levels to 5, I'm going to just see 5 branch levels that I can work with. So, highlight last level will actually show me this as white, which means that whenever I'm uh, working on this level, it's easier to differentiate from the other levels. So, that way I know that um, this is the level I'm working on. For example, um, change the length, vary the length. Um, something else like um, straightening the tops. So, this is just an indicator for you to actually differentiate the last level from the rest of the levels. Keep lines visible means that whenever you are deselecting the tree, you're still seeing the lines. So, if you uncheck this, the tree will be invisible while it is in line mode. So, again, this is an optimization um, parameter that you can use to uh, speed up the uh, viewport interaction, but the tree still renders, of course. So, this is just for the viewport display. All right, next we have the tree levels. If I change my viewport levels, these are the levels that I see in the viewport. Of course, I need a minimum level of one. And uh, this is the render levels. So, if I set my viewport levels to 1, while my render levels are set to 5, and I'm using the render levels, then I'd be rendering with 5 levels, because this is what is set in the user render levels. If I uncheck this, it will just render with whatever number of levels I have set in the viewport. This is, again, to speed things up in the viewport while keeping the render at high resolution. And this is much more effective whenever I'm using a high resolution tree. For example, if I choose the birch tree, 
and I go to three parameters, I can set the viewport levels uh, to a low value, say to one, while the render levels are set to six, and uh, whenever I render, I'm gonna render the tree in high resolution. So this is very useful. The next thing that I wanna talk about is found under tree parameters, and for that, again, I'm gonna go back to the default tree, so the first thing that I can change is the tree size. Now I can scale the tree with the scale tool, but this will not propagate uh, properly with the noise functions that are deforming the tree because the noise functions depend on the position of certain elements within the tree. So they will change if uh, that position changes, like the position of the branches. Uh, instead, I would use the tree size, which will resize the tree properly without any uh, unwanted deformations. The second thing is the tree grow. For this I'm gonna go to um, display lines as well to make things uh, clearer to see. So if I um, reduce the grow the tree is gonna is gonna grow so easily. All right, and uh, this applies to any kind of tree. So if I go to my tree library and choose um, whatever tree and change the grow value, the tree is gonna change its growth according to that value. Okay, so the uh, grow ratio over here is uh, the ratio of the growth of the trunk compared to the branches. So if I reduce the grow ratio, say to 0 0.02, a very small value, it means that the trunk is gonna take just 2% of the growth time. So once I reach two, it means that the whole trunk has grown fully. All right, if I set it, say to um, 0 0.9, it means that the trunk is gonna take 90% of the growth time. So it's going to take um, up to uh, 0 0.9 for the trunk to grow and then the branches are going to grow in only 10%. The default value is 0 0.4 which is a good compromise for the trunk and the branches. Now the grow overlap will actually overlap the growth of the trunk and the branches. So while the trunk is growing the branches are going to sprout out as well. So if you increase that the overlap is going to be bigger and therefore the uh, branches and the trunk will grow together. Also this is a good way for having the branches change direction according to the direction of the trunk whenever you have the growth happening. So in case you reduce the overlap down to zero the branches don't change orientation at all but if you increase the overlap and uh, go to trunk parameters and now just increase the turbulence of the trunk really high just for demonstration, then the uh, branches are going to really change orientation according to the direction of the trunk. If you still wanted the trunk to be deformed like this, but you didn't want the branches to take that orientation, you can go to branch level 1 and you can reduce the orient to trunk and uh, when you do this, then the branches don't take the orientation of the trunk but they will keep their default orientation regardless of the trunk orientation. So this is just another level of control not just for growth but also for the orientation of the branches. Now the next parameter we have under the three parameters is the flatten tree and this will just flatten out the tree to make it look like a flat object like this. Whenever you do that you can still apply wind effects. So if I go to hyper wind and uh, check the wind to be on, the uh, tree will still uh, animate. You, you can increase the wind speed for example and um, the tree will still animate properly even though it is flattened out. So this is for artistic um, effects in case you wanted to do that. That's the flatten tree. The adjust meshing is um, a utility parameter. If you uh, 
ever find yourself in a situation where the polygons of the tree need fixing, which uh, would rarely happen, but in case it did, then you would actually, okay, let's remove the uh, wind for now. All right, so I can't find any polygons that need fixing right now, but in case you did, you would actually change the adjust meshing, right? This will rotate the polygons and therefore change the up vector and um, you would be fixing any imperfections that you would have by changing the adjust meshing value. But in most cases, you will never need to use this. Then we have the noise type for the tree because the deformation follows um, some noise functions and you can change that to actually change the look of the tree. Now, whenever I change the noise to hammer, for example, I see that I have a drastically different look for the tree. Okay, I like it, but it's um, too noisy and I would like to tone this down, for example. So uh, how can I control it without having to go into every branch level and change that? Well, it's very easy. All I have to do is go to global controls and uh, go to my turbulence. All right, so here I can tone down the turbulence. If I set it to zero, it means that I have no turbulence at all and my tree is uh, made out of straight lines, but that's not really the parameter that I want to change. The parameter that I do want to change here is the turbulence scale. So if I increase it, I would actually get a bigger scale for the turbulence. All right. And uh, therefore, I would get a different look for the tree. Combining this with the turbulence value, you would get a totally different um, look for the tree. You can cycle between the different uh, functions and see what they give you. Now to actually get a good uh, appearance, I'm going to reset these to uh, one by one by right clicking on the spinners. And um, you can also change the complexity of the noise. So if you reduce it down to zero, the noise is going to be very coarse without much detail. Increasing that will give the noise detail. You can also use this for animation to um, create some effect for the um, tree, which will bring it to life, especially when combined with some wind, which is not very, let's say, 0 0.3 for the wind speed. If I um, animate the complexity, so let's say it starts at 1, I'll set a keyframe, I'll set a keyframe at frame 0 and um, go say to frame 70 and set it um, up to say 6. All right and um, play the animation. It looks like the tree is coming to life well, because it's still moving because of the wind. So it's not really a dead object and it's straightening up and uh, you can also combine this with whatever other options you want. Set this say back to two and just explore the different uh, noise functions that we have. So you see that um, a lot of them are very nice and they give you uh, totally different looks for the tree. I'm using the default tree over here but uh, you can apply this to whatever tree type and therefore get different uh, variations on on the same tree. Now, of course, you can cycle with the up and down keyboard arrows to switch between different types. Okay, so that's it for the tree parameters. If you want to reset the tree, you can go back to the default and you see that the default is using the turbulence noise function. So that's it for the three parameters. The next thing I want to talk about is the trunk parameters.